So I thought it might be fun today to uh, play with my DSO, the uh, digital storage oscilloscope here, the 112 from JYE Tech. And I've downloaded this little app. I think it's called Frequency for the iPad. I've not paid for it, which is why you can see some advertising. But if we press play here, it uses the audio output of the iPad to um, generate some waves and we've got a sine wave here um, 8 kilohertz it's running at and if I look at the menu and press frequency yeah this agrees 8 kilohertz and it's got some presets you can change things about uh, so 20 kilohertz but of course that's the maximum because that's pretty much the upper limit of human hearing and most audio outputs. It also allows you to do square waves, although that doesn't seem to be showing up very well on my DSO. Triangular waves, again a bit sinusoidal. Let me bring down the frequency a bit. No, very much still sinusoidal. And try to square again. Oh no, it's not liking this at all. There must be a better way of doing this. And of course, there is. You can go out and buy yourself a function generator, usually quite expensive. Or there's a couple of cheaper options, which I'm going to look at today. So looking around eBay, I found this little module here at the bottom. It's based around the 555 timer. Um, it's got three, four capacitors on there, a couple of resistors, a variable resistor here, and a diode, say it's powered up, and it creates a square wave. If I turn it on, uh, I'm feeding just over 9 volts to the uh, 555 timer there, and we can see the pulses on the screen, and let me just adjust the time base bit fast that's getting one millisecond per division let's go to five so we can see there we go we can see a couple of pulses there and this is only running at 28 hertz at the moment but anyway we can change this pot and change that pulse and make it run faster so we're now at 47 60 hertz there us mains voltage and it's getting a fair bit faster 135 hertz let's bring down the time base but it still only is square waves and it's worth it for 99p to have a little play but i think we can do better so that brings me to this kit, uh, which arrived a couple of weeks ago actually, and I haven't had a chance to play with. Uh, some instructions here, and it's all based, there we go, it's all based around this chip here, which is an XR2206CP. So we've got a bag of bits there, with the potentiometers, the uh, XR2206. 2206 CP chip, uh, some knobs and some connectors, that sort of thing, and it comes with one of these laser cut uh, clear perspex cases, uh, which I quite like, and the circuit boards in there. So I will just open that up, and you can see the circuit board at the top is marked where all the resistors and capacitors and all the other components need to go with. You know, C4, C2, C1 up there, which correlates to this list of parts here. Um, it mentions it's a resistor, 1K for example, regardless of the polarity. I presume that means you can put it in either way. It's a resistor. And then we look at the electrolytic capacitor, the positive short feet, negative long feet. Well, it's all fairly self-explanatory, isn't it? So I'm going to get on and start to build this. So resistor 1 um, is a 1K resistor. I believe that's 
this one, um, regardless of the polarity, position R1. Okay, so one side and the other. There we go. Spread the legs a bit so it holds in. We'll do a few of these at once, I think. Resistor 2. So with all the uh, fixed resistors in place, we'll turn it over and hopefully they won't fall out. And solder these up. Now, I am waiting for a new soldering iron to turn up. I watched BigClive.com's uh, video a week or so ago on the 936 soldering station. Now, this existing soldering iron is temperature controlled um, and has served me well for about the last 15 years but the tips for it are quite expensive and getting increasingly difficult to find uh, I got this soldering iron from Maplin here in the UK and this is my last good tip and I think I found some that were correct um, but they were going to cost nearly £8 and when a whole new Chinese 936 co uh, copy soldering station uh, costs £23 and you can get the tips for less than a pound each it seems a bit daft to continue with this one really now it refers to these which I think are they ceramic uh, monolithic whatever they are as non-polar capacitors so I'm looking for non-polar capacitors 104 is C2 so there's a 104 and I'll get all these in now so there are capacitors most of them anyway in that row there next to these um, jumper pins adding capacitance um, to change the frequency so C1 is a hundred microfarad capacitor making sure to get the negative to the negative side obviously on the electrolytic uh, and the other two are these 10 microfarad uh, and they're 25 volts so we should be able to push this up to 24 volts if we really needed to so i think it's taken me longer to do this bit than the solder on all the components but these uh, screws for the board really confused me I assumed you would put them through and you'd attach the board to the bottom of this case but there's hardly anything there to get the nut on but I think actually you put it through you put the nut on the bottom and that just keeps it up off the bottom and then four of those should just hold it up nicely and then the rest of the case holds down the circuit board i think that's right anyway and there we have it completed we just need to put these um jumpers in here so i plugged some wires into the function generator and they're connected to the uh, oscilloscope let's plug in some power to the function generator ah look at that straight away so we can change the amplitude of that wave there which does seem to be an inverse of what you would have expected and these two are coarse and fine adjustment of the frequency so there we go and in the top right hand corner there we can see we're running about 220 hertz let's bring this a bit higher there we go and change the time base to half a millisecond um, perhaps that was a bit much Oops, sorry wrong way around see i'm very much still getting to learn how to use this little scope and we can that seems to be the fine adjustment whereas that seems to be the coarse so if we turn it up we're about 15 kilohertz there so if I drop 
to 20 microseconds. Ah, this is fun. Let's try a triangle wave. Okay, the tops and bottoms are knocked off a bit there. Ah, that's better. Adjust the amplitude. Got some nice triangle waves. Interesting. Let's try the square. And there are the square waves. Let's bring them back into the... Uh, yeah, can't change the amplitude of the square wave. Just the frequency. Well, I'm going to continue playing with this function generator. I'm quite pleased with the build. It seems like a quality kit. Um, and it's interesting to play with the oscilloscope. Hopefully you've enjoyed this little video. If you did, give me a thumbs up and share if you can. Comment down below and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.